Today was a crazy day around the league. We got news to talk about with Yannick Ngakwe, with Devontae Adams, Amari Cooper, even Hassan Reddick trying to get into the mix too. Team, keep it clean. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, leave a like on the video because it goes a long way like y'all have been doing. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And let's get straight into it. So the Baltimore Ravens a couple of weeks ago, they signed Yannick Ngakwe to their practice squad. And what could he come and do? He could help them out. He could give their pass rushers some relief because the pass a couple of weeks ago it had been doing good in my opinion but it could be even better so why not bring in Yannick Ngakwe he was sitting out there in free agency you sign him to the practice squad so it's a very low risk potential high reward type of thing you know that's the, what the Baltimore Ravens all about so they signed him his first game against the Bengals he got like 11 snaps and he looked good he looked good but then the second game uh, against the Washington Commanders he looked even better and he was out there a little bit more even got a sack on Jaden Daniels out of all people so I said it myself. Y'all heard me say, like, look, look, y y Yannick Ngakwe looking good. Ravens going to have to put that man on the active roster. They better not play with it. And I guess Ravens was listening because in a move that they made last night, they placed Yannick Ngakwe. They signed him to from the practice squad to the active roster roster so now he's on the 53 man roster he get a nice little pay raise too uh and they couldn't risk it though because when you have somebody on a practice squad you can call them up to the active roster three times on game day they already called him up twice he wasn't gonna make it to the third before he could end up getting signed by somebody else Jess Rebick said there were some different teams looking at him he didn't say which specific teams but I could see that teams like the Lions who just lost Aiden Hutchinson they also lost somebody else uh, another defensive end as well so why wouldn't they look at a unique Ngakwe who looked really good against the commanders in limited action so this was a very smart move by the Baltimore Ravens to bring him up uh, from the practice squad to the active roster because he was getting ready to be gone I, I, I guarantee you, Yannick Ngakwe was getting ready to be out of there but in order to promote somebody to the active roster, somebody's got to go. So who ended up having to leave? Well, the Baltimore Ravens, they announced today that they signed Yannick Ngagwe to the 53-man roster, but they released offensive lineman Salah. So Salah, who was a draft pick last year, uh, never found his footing on the offensive line for the Baltimore Ravens. Had a little bit of an opportunity to be a starter, but it just it didn't end up working out. So they released him. Uh, if he clears waivers, they can sign him to the practice squad because they have two spots on a practice squad. But why? Why do they have two spots? Well, that's because they already had one open practice squad spot because Yannick Ngakwe, that was his spot, remember? But then they also released uh, Demarion Williams from the practice squad, Pepe Williams, they released him from the practice squad. And I was like, huh, why would they release him from the practice squad? Now, this is where we just connecting the dots because nothing is official yet. Nothing. But Mr. Arthur Millette, he tweeted this today. And again, he, who knows? It could be anything. But maybe, just maybe, Arthur Millette is letting us know, like, hey, my hammy is good. I'm feeling healthy. I'm ready to ride. And... Hey, look, Pepe Williams, thanks for coming through, but I'm back now. Marlon Humphrey, he ain't missed no time. He's healthy, so Ravens could be getting some more added help in the secondary, some much more needed help in the secondary, even though I believe that the Baltimore Ravens' biggest issue on defense, I don't think it's talent. I really don't think it's talent. Like, you got guys walking around like Kyle Hamilton, like Marlon Humphrey, Nate Wiggins, Brandon Stevens. You got Matt Abike, Travis Jones, Michael Pierce, got Roquan Smith, Trent Simpson, even Marcus Will, Darius Washington. So you, you got some really good players on all three levels of the defense. It's not a talent issue in my opinion, man. It really isn't. I ain't even mentioned Kyle Vinoy. Without fair way be doing this thing. In my opinion, it's not talent. It's really not. It's schematics. It's communication that's what I feel like the biggest issue has been with these Baltimore Ravens and they need to fix it ASAP but on a more positive note Yannick Ngakwe welcome back to the active roster again it's been a nice day if you want to get a nice wide receiver huh you see them Jets Jets ended up getting Devontae Adams I don't know what the Baltimore Ravens Devontae Adams when the news first came out that he was officially looking for a trade I shut it down. I shut it down from jump. I said, this ain't happening. Ravens ain't doing it. But then we kept getting reports and reading stuff, and we kept getting a little bit of hope. There was a little bit of hope that the Ravens just might maybe. 
But it obviously didn't happen. But today I know a lot of Ravens fans were very upset because they saw what the Jets traded in order to acquire a Devontae Adams. And let's read this from Adam Sheft. It said, the trade condition update. The conditional third round pick the Jets are trading to the Raiders for Devontae Adams becomes a second if any of the following happens. So the Jets, to, in order to acquire Devontae Adams, and, and that's where he always wanted to go. He wanted to play with Aaron Rodgers. That was the original report anyway. He either wanted to play with Aaron Rodgers or Derek Carr. Derek Carr is going to be out for who knows how long, so why not go to the Jets, play with your boy? Even though they 2-4, and four, they ain't looking too good, but hey, it's his choice, not mine. Um, but with Devontae Adams, uh, they traded a conditional third-round pick to acquire him. Uh, so that conditional third-round pick becomes a second if Devontae Adams makes the first or second AP All-Pro team or... <laughs> If he's on the active roster for the AFC Championship game or the Super Bowl. Now, look, Ravens going to, they got other plans when it comes to the AFC Championship game and the Super Bowl that's going to interfere with that. But, hey, if y'all want to come through for the AFC Championship, no problem. But Ravens, that, that's, they are in the Super Bowl. Anyway, um, so Devontae Adams is now a Jet. And, and again, Ray, a lot of Ravens fans were upset. Like, man, why could a conditional third round pick EDC, you could have sent that and got. But... Here's the kicker. Raiders are not paying any of Devontae Adams' remaining salary. The Jets are assuming the balance of it. So the Jets were very, very desperate for this one to happen. Aaron Rodgers, right? <laughs> when Aaron Rodgers threw that deep ball to Mike Williams, and Mike Williams, he, he couldn't come back for it and he got picked off. That was the last try. That boy, Aaron Rodgers said, all right. Get this dude out of here. Get me Devontae Adams ASAP. I don't want Mike Williams on my team no more. And guess what? The following day, not even 24 hours later, the following day, the Jets traded for Devontae Adams, and they're saying that Mike Williams is on the trade block. <laughs> but he wasn't the only receiver that ended up getting traded today. Josh Allen, who a lot of people say is better than Lamar Jackson. And whatever your opinion is, it is cool. But... I always say, like, look, Lamar Jackson, in my opinion, he's better than Josh Allen. Why? Because Lamar does more with less, especially when it comes to weapons. Josh Allen, through the when he first started, when he was a rookie, it was ugly. It, it was really ugly. And then they got Stephon Diggs. Literally everything, everything changed. Got him a true number one established wide out, a wide receiver who was like that. Josh Allen took off. He was doing his thing. Uh, but then, even though Lamar <laughs> still won them two MVPs. But anyway, um, Josh Allen, they traded Stephon Diggs this last year, off season. They traded him to the Texans. Traded him to the Texans this past off season. And Stephon Diggs and CJ Trout, they've been doing their thing over there. But Josh Allen, he he's still been doing his thing, but... He's been struggling, especially against better teams. It's like, oh, man. They, they been, and people have been like, oh, Josh Allen needs help. He needs to get a true number one wide receiver. He needs more weapons. And it's like, hold up. Josh Allen, like, Lamar been going through this for years. 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 Josh Allen went through it for what? Five, six games? And now they say, oh, Josh Allen, he needs more weapons. And what did the Bills do? Boom. Traded for Mari Cooper. <laughs> Like, that's what I say. Look, 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 look better than Josh Allen to me, man. He, he is for that reason alone. Like, let Raven mess around and, and trade for somebody like that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Anyway, um, the Bills. They uh it said the Bills are trading for Browns wide receiver Mari Cooper, and they sent a third round pick uh in a pick swap. So the Browns are getting a third round pick, uh, and the Bills get Amari Cooper. And the two teams are also going to make a swap of late picks. The Bills get a six and the Browns get a seven. So basically, the Bills uh, send over a third round pick to get Amari Cooper. So he is officially going to be in Buffalo. Devontae is officially going to be in New York. And both wide receivers who were very hot names when it comes to trade talks, uh, they both get fresh starts. Brandon Stevens uh, has got to be Baltimore Ravens' trickiest player on defense right now. Because we always talk about the same thing with Brandon Stevens. He never gets beat deep. He ain't never, like, get burned or anything like that. He's always right there around the receiver, around the ball. But he's just been struggling sometimes to make a play on the ball. How frustrating is Brandon Stevens? Not necessarily in a bad way, but it's just frustrating because he, he, he's so close. 
Let's read this. It says, uh, Terry McLaurin, Scary Terry, really, really good wide receiver. Said he was matched up against Brandon Stevens on 22 of his 30 routes in week six. So a little over 73%. So Brandon Stevens was going up against Scary Terry a lot. So one of the better receivers in the NFL. Brandon Stevens one-on-one with him. Uh, and he hauled in three of his four targets for 28 yards and a touchdown against Brandon Stevens. So it's like he caught three out of four. So he caught 75% of the passes thrown his way. Uh, but get this. Steven forced a tight window on all four targets. <laughs> on all four. So that means all four. He was right there and covered. He was so close. But it says he, he recorded an average target separation of just 0.5 yards. Not even a full yard, man. Half a yard. That's how close he was. Oh, that. And that's the average. I mean, not even how close. That's the average. Anyway, so Stevens has now forced a tight window on 50% of his targets and coverage this season. Says the highest among cornerbacks with at least 30 targets and the only cornerback over 40%. So that's where it's like, because I know people say Brandon Stevens is bad. It's not that he's bad. He's not a bad cornerback. He's just, he got to get his head turned around. Once he gets that. To where an A, where they gotta be a DB coach. And there's been a lot of talk about our DB coach, uh, Denar Wilson, I believe, who went, who left the Ravens and went to the Titans, and now they got a really, really good pass defense. And the people been saying, oh, that's probably why we've been lagging, because he left. But anyway, whether our current DB coach, Zach Orr, gotta talk to him or something, I don't know what it's gotta be. But they, they, got, they gotta coach him up on this, man, because. There is a crazy amount of potential with Brandon Stevens, man. It's and he's so close. He's so close. If you could just work on him getting his head turned around, work on him making a better play on the ball, and there will be some. He's like we saw it against Terry McLaurin. He's he's right there. It's so close. Like the touchdown on that fourth down, he, he was all over it, all over. It. And, and it's like with Brandon Stevens. You can't play it much better than he's been playing. You can't play the, the receivers much better than he's been playing them. But once he start making a play on the ball, oh, then it'll be game over. So team, keep it clean. We've entered my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. If you would like to be part of it, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for our Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Let's get straight into it from our Team Keep It Clean patrons. First, uh, first question came from our guy, Devin. He said, I guess I jinxed the Devontae Adams trade, but I believe if our wide receiver core of Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, and Nelly stay consistent, and we stay true to our identity in the run game while including the tight ends, we will be just fine. And hey, like right now, it's, it's so far so good. Like the Ravens, their receivers are doing good, and that's what we like to see. Zay Flowers been doing this thing. Rashad Bateman, he's also been doing this thing. And I know a lot of Ravens fans, especially today, they be like, hey, look, we're good enough. We're set. We don't need anybody else. I don't know why you guys wanted Devontae Adams in the first place, but my guy, Flash, the Flash Six on Twitter, he worded it perfectly because he said the following. He said, are the Ravens pass catchers currently playing well? Yes. Could the Ravens bolster their historic offense with a playmaker like Devontae? Yes. Both things can be true. So I appreciated that because it's the same thing that I was saying before. Like, was Ravens run game the best in the NFL last season? Yes. It was. Did they still go out and add an elite running back to their run game that was the best and that has been the best recently over the past couple years? Yes. And guess what it's doing? <laughs> you see it with uh, our guy, um, Derrick Henry. So it's not just because something is going good. That's great that it's going good. It doesn't mean you can't make it even better, and it doesn't mean you can't make it even stronger. We'll see what, if anything, the Baltimore Ravens do. Next question came from another team. Keep it clean. Patreon, my guy, Keontae. He said, Devontae to the Jets. I thought he wanted to win. LOL. Who took a little shot? He said, I really feel like us Ravens just need, some, need someone to break the top speed of wide receiver and to maybe take a shot at edge rusher or maybe even a Demarcus Lawrence type that can do what Matt Abike can do and play anywhere on the defensive line to help with rotation. As always, love the channel and appreciate the flock fam. Salute to team. Keep it clean. Appreciate that. Um, you said uh, top speed and wide receiver. 
I mean, Ra Ravens got somebody right now sitting around fresh. They ain't played a snap yet. They ain't been active all season. So you could give it a shot. Next question came from my guy Martin. He said, in your last video, you talk about getting a wide receiver that can uh, get the go up and get it ball. 100% agree with that. That's actually my preferred type of wide receiver. Well, Cortland Sutton is that guy. He's 6'4", and he is out there making spectacular catches with Bo Nix. Imagine him with Lamar. The only thing I would worry about trading for another wide receiver is I don't want to break what's been working. I get you with that. I, I, I feel you on that. But it's a process. It's a process. And you could ease whoever that wide receiver would be into the mix. It ain't got to be forced right away. And I get it. You don't want to mess up chemistry. You don't want to try to. We always talk about it on here. You don't want to fix something that's not broken. I, I, I get that. But it's just one of those things that could just take some time. You add them in the mix and you get them accustomed to everything. You get that chemistry going and everything. And then they could fit right in. So anyway, continuing, he also said, um, Bateman has finally been getting that chemistry we have all been waiting for, and Nelson Aguilar already doesn't get that many targets, but he makes the most of the few targets he does get. Our offense has been clicking every time someone's number's been called. Uh, whoever it is, they've been getting it, minus a few hiccups. Another uh, thing I love about this team is that no one's been complaining about their role in the offense, even if they're not putting up the numbers they like to. Oh, yeah, that's, that's probably one of the biggest things right there. But as a Baltimore Raven, as a Baltimore Ravens player on offense, you got to be like that. I feel like you, you, you have to, or else you will be frustrated 24-7. Because as a wide receiver, your number ain't always going to be called. It ain't always going to be a game for you. That's life as a Baltimore Ravens receiver. Even as a tight end. And the tight ends, we know the tight ends have been eating for years in this offense. And Ravens offenses, excuse me. But there's some, there have been some games this season where the tight ends ain't even been involved like that, at least pass catching-wise. But now you know if you're a running back, hey, you gonna be contributed. But but you get you 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 cannot be like, and a lot of teams say, oh, you can't be a selfish player. But with Ravens offense, you like really can't be a selfish player. But even if you're not a selfish player, like you you really gotta be very mature and be able to keep your emotions in check. You got to man, cause ooh boy. Anyway, he said, I know Zay Flowers did have that one uh, like or whatever, but uh, other than that, he's been fine. Oh, where Zay Flowers was retweeting stuff about the offense and stuff and the lack of usage in the second half. I think it was uh, in the Raiders game, I believe. But yeah, uh, he said Mark Andrews has been the ultimate team player. Even though we use three tight ends, you don't see him complaining. Same goes with Nelson. He only gets like two targets, but makes the most of them. Uh, that like that huge catch in the Dallas game. This is one of those Ravens teams where I love all our players and I feel like they are all doing their part and I want the best, not only for the team, but for them as well. And adding a wide receiver might mean uh, someone gets left out entirely, but I wouldn't be upset. If they did trade for somebody like Cortland Sutton, I just don't want to see anyone's role that they have worked hard uh, for taken away uh, from them for no fault of their own. I want to see all these guys succeed. That's the business, though, man. That's the business. You think about a quarterback like Lamar Jackson. How did Lamar Jackson even get the opportunity in the first place? Why did, was he even drafted in the first place? Well, that's because Joe Flacco, who had done an excellent job for the Baltimore Ravens, it was time. It was time. So his job got taken away. How did Joe Flacco get this, the job in the first place? Because the quarterbacks before him, they it, Ravens needed a quarterback because the previous quarterbacks, they weren't doing their job. And, of course, we know other stuff happened too. But that's how Joe Flacco got his opportunity. It's, it's the business, and that's, that's, that's what it is. So, yeah, if Baltimore Ravens brought in a receiver, then that would mean another receiver would be shipped out or – they wouldn't get the opportunities anymore. It, it's just the business, man. But that's why being a GM, you got to take the feelings all the way out of it. A special shout out to all of our team. Keep it clean, Patriots. Now, let's get to all of our other questions. First one came from my guy, Jack. Now, Jack, you sent it to the wrong email. Jack, but I'm going to give you a pass. I'm going to give you a pass. He said, uh, hey, my name is Jack. I've been watching you since I joined the Army and been stationed in Alaska. Uh, your videos got me through some very hard times. Oh, hey, I, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I'm I'm glad that the videos helped in whatever the way that they did. But trust me, and, and I ain't lying when I say this, man. Y'all helped me way more than I could do anything for y'all. Y'all helped me a lot. So I appreciate y'all, man. Uh, he said, I was wondering, with Williams not playing good at the safety position, 
could Buda Baker be someone the Ravens could get? I also was wondering, I know Devin White just got cut off the Eagles. Could we add him? Hope all is good with you and the family. Go flock. Hey, appreciate that. As far as Devin White, the linebacker, um, and I was just talking to one of my guys about this a couple of days ago. They add him to the practice squad. They could if they wanted to. They chose to. Um, Because I know, yeah, he fell out of favor over there in Philly. And the Ravens, like, if it's a linebacker, like, Ravens, and there's some juice left, Ravens could get it out of them. They, they, they really could. But, um, yeah, so I, I they, they could add him to the practice. But I wouldn't add him to the active roster, like, from jump or anything like that. Uh, but back to uh, Marcus Williams. Could, could the Ravens get a Buda Baker? I don't think the Ravens would make a move for a safety. They're paying Marcus Williams a whole lot of money. Um, the only move I could see them possibly making is if they not necessarily benched him, but just took took some snaps away from him here and there, took some situational snaps away from him here and there. Now that would that would take a lot for the Ravens to do, because again, no Ray, and I mean not even just Ravens, but teams go by that money. If they pay you a lot of money, they expect you to be out there on the field making plays for them. Uh, with Marcus Williams, yeah, he has been struggling quite a bit. Um, it's been a bit of a rough season for him here and there, but um, so it'll be hard for the Ravens to take him off the field. Cause they're like, hey, we paid this guy all this money all these a couple years ago. He should be making plays for us. So to remove him from that equation, even if it's temporarily for a few plays here, a few plays there, situational stuff, maybe like on third and longs or whatnot, they could do that. Um, but that I, that's all that I think they would do. I don't think they would make a trade for a safety. Jay, ah, Jay, I love you, Jay. But Jay, you sent it to the wrong email. Uh, good, I'm giving passes, especially because Ravens won. They won the battle of the Beltway, but. No more passes after this. He said, uh, I hope all is well with you and the family. Oh, everything is great, Jay. I hope everything's even better with you, my friend. He said, blessings on you, your wife, your children. Appreciate that. Zay Flowers has more yards than Xavier Worthy, Stefan Diggs, Tank Dale, Mari Cooper, and Cortland Sutton. Shout out to that boy, Zay. He said, Rashad Bateman has more yards than T. Higgins, Jerry Judy, Jalen Waddle, and Keon Coleman. Do you think Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman have shown enough to be considered a legit starting tandem in the NFL? If not, what more do you think they need to show? Keep up the good work, my man. Oh, no, 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 no. They just need to keep up the good work. I think you answer your own question without even trying to. Because you were talking to me, and our work is okay. It ain't great. But when you say keep up the good work, that's all they got to do. That's all Rashad Bateman and Zay Flowers got to do. They got to keep up the good work. Are they a good tandem, a legit starting tandem? Well, yeah, I mean, we see it. We see it. We're watching it with our own eyes, and especially with Rashad Bateman because now he's getting the opportunity. He wasn't getting that before. But with him getting the opportunity now, he's getting a show like, hey, I, I can make some stuff happen now too. And, again, with him and Lamar Jackson, their connection, their chemistry, it just keeps going up, and that's what we need. If Rashad Bateman is going to be the starting wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens, if Zay Flowers is going to continue to be the starting wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens, they need to have that chemistry, and they got it. And it's only going to go up from here. So, yeah, to answer your questions again, even though you already answered them, uh, do you think Zay and Bate have shown enough to be a, considered a legit starting tandem in the league? Yes. Uh, and if not, what more do you think they need to show? Well, they already shown it, but they can just keep up the good work. Next question came from my guy, John. He said, aloha from Hawaii. What's up, John? Shout out to Hawaii. He said, I was wondering if you thought the Ravens would realistically. <laughs> no, this ain't really like, I know I'd I be saying some outlandish stuff on here sometimes and i'll be hoping for some trades that it's like woo, but this one mm. he said if the, you thought the ravens would realistically consider trading for michael parsons dallas ain't letting him go nowhere they ain't letting him go nowhere he's still hurt right now anyway but he, he ain't going nowhere but continuing he said uh the cowboy season is not going well and they may be in the market to trade the linebacker before the deadline he is currently injured and hasn't produced as well as he usually does he averages 13 and a half sacks per season as he only has one sack this season so far i think he might be an asset to the baltimore ravens rush similar to the way Clowney was and he could add a spark to our let's face it struggling defense oh yeah we definitely been facing it because that even been struggling uh, he said do you see parsons coming to baltimore and if so what do you think a fair trade would be I would love it if he was healthy, of course, because with Micah Parsons, what I love about him is that they literally move him everywhere. He is not just a defensive end. He's not just a rush linebacker. He's not just a defensive tag. He's just a defensive baller. He's just a defensive player, a, a great defensive player. So if the Baltimore Ravens could get somebody like him, that would just, oh, man, he could help that defense a lot. But 
it's just it ain't realistic Speaking of D-Lyman, next question came from my guy D3. He said, hey, Graven, peace and blessings to you and the family. I have a quick hypothetical question for you. Since Ben Cleveland has a hard time getting on the field as a starter at right tackle, how about the Ravens put him more at defensive tackle? It was great to see his excitement after the field goal block in the Commanders game. With his height, just like Brent Urban, he can clog up passing lanes. Plus, the Ravens like for players to be in different positions. Positionless defense, right? He said, quick note, also like the fact that the Ravens are using King Henry in the fourth quarter after the defense is tired of tackling him. Did you see in the commander's game that the safety just reached without trying to actually hit Henry? Definitely a business decision. I didn't even notice, but I love it. He said, stay blessed and thank you for your diligence in bringing us quality, non-biased content. Hey, appreciate that, D3. Thank you, man. Appreciate you a lot, man. Um, could they make the switch like they did with Pat Ricard, a former defensive lineman turned offense to play fullback? Could they make Ben Cleveland, a former offensive lineman, into a defensive lineman? <laughs> they could go for it. I think that that would be something that you would have to do in the offseason, though. Um, I don't think that they would be ready to dedicate the time, whatever time it would take, um, to really have him focus on learning everything that a D lineman has to do, have him going through the drills with the defensive line. I mean, they could, they could right now because they really ain't using him for whatever. They could have him like watch along and whatnot, but just for him to get that in depth care and that the in depth teaching and to understand the fundamentals and everything, that would really take some time. So I don't know if they would be willing to take time away from what they already got going on in order to dedicate that to him learning how to be a defensive lineman. Next question came from my guy, Ajon. He said, hey, Graven, long time listener. Third time sending a question from Cali. What's up, Cali? My boy on the West Coast Ravens. He said, uh, team keep it clean. Flock, Ravens Nation. I got three questions. Number one, how do you feel about the chemistry between Lamar Jackson and Rashad Bateman? It seems like when Bateman is targeted five or more times, he has more than three receptions. Uh, now, and he said, and we, and we win those games. We've been loving it. We, we've been loving their chemistry. And, and we talked about it in yesterday's video, how that was something that so many of all of us were concerned about going into this season, especially since the Ravens were like, all right, it's all up to Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman. Y'all are going to be the top wide receivers. We were like, ooh, uh, okay. Uh, all right, let's see how it goes and hope for the best. So we've been loving how it's been going so far. And like we mentioned before, it's only going to get better now. Number two, what was Wink Martindale thinking? I mean, Zach or LOL. Oh, he's been a little petty there. He said, when it's fourth and long, focus on covering and not all out blitzing. How about we actually double their best wide receiver instead of leaving him one on one, passing him off to a safety? It's not working. Yeah. Uh, again, I, I think with the defense, it's, it's schematically, it, it's the scheme issues. I don't think it's talent. I really don't think it's talent. I think it's scheme issue. I mean, pass rush could be a little better too, but it's really been the scheme. Um, so situationally, just overall, I feel like Zach Orr got to clean some stuff up. Uh, he also said number three. And Graver, do you have any questions for us to answer? How about once a week on Thursdays, you ask us a question that we can answer in the comments? He said, LOL, it could be fun. Well, all these questions, y'all y'all already answered plenty of questions already. That is a good one. No, that, that, that's fun. I, I like that. I had to think about something with that, but I appreciate it. He said, take care. Stay safe. God bless. And just like Lamar, when it comes to playing the NFC teams, I'm going to win and I'm out. Appreciate you, John. I love it. We got a lot of new people sending in questions, so I appreciate y'all. Hey, look, look. Don't be shy. If you got a question, send it. Just send it. Don't be shy. If you never sent in a question before, send it. Because there's people that be they, that send in plenty of questions. They still send in plenty of questions, which is great. But if you knew, if you like a little, oh, I want to send that. Or I think that, no. Send it. We love it. Appreciate y'all. Next question came from my guy, Darren. He said, what's up, my man? What's up, Darren? He said, hope all is well with you and yours. I'm thinking Devontae Walker will get his name called soon. Mm, uh, let's see. He said, if you notice, Deontay Hardy and Justice Hill return kicks for us. True. Uh, in my mind, I'm thinking that once Keith Mitchell comes back, Justice Hill's special team role will increase. Now, think about that one. Just think about it. Um, Derrick Henry, obviously, number one back. Right now, Justice Hill is the number two back. And he's been a, the third down back, pass catching, running back, all that good stuff. And he's been doing a really, really good job, too. Uh, with Keith Mitchell, um, that's why I, I love that it's, a, it's, like a, it's like a problem. It's a good problem to have. We're like, oh, man, what, where's Keith Mitchell going to fit in? What's he going to do? What's his role going to be? Um, I, we'll see. We'll see. Everything just depends on, obviously, he's going to be healthy when he does come back. Um, but how are they going to carve out a role for Keith Mitchell? Um, it's going to be it's gonna be slow, in my opinion. I think it's going to be one of those things where it's, 
it's like slow progress. Not in a bad way. Like not, I don't want to say slow progress, but that's, that's probably the, the, a bad term. It's probably going to be just working him in slowly. Uh, I don't think it's going to be like, all right, Keith Mitchell back. All right, take off. You're the number two running back. Let's go. I don't think it's going to be anything like that, especially how well Justice Hill's been doing. Now, again, we know what Keith Mitchell, like, that boy, well, that boy was one of them guys, man. He was amazing. But um, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just see. But I don't think it's going to be like, boom, like right away. Uh, he said, how does it sound that Hardy gets deactivated in favor of Justice Hill taking over the returner position and giving the roster spot to Devontae's Walker? I'm really itching for that solid deep threat ability that he can hopefully provide. Imagine our offense being just that, just that little bit more scary. Yeah, imagine that. Also, imagine if he showed the Baltimore Ravens enough in training camp in order to get an opportunity. But he didn't. He didn't. Uh, Ravens are clearly... They don't, not that they don't value Devontae as Walker. He obviously made the roster, but he has not been active, not for a single game, not one. Um, and because the Ravens have been rolling with, I believe, five wide receivers. Yeah, Zay Flowers. Oh, is it six? It's Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, Nelson Aguilar, uh, Deontay Hardy, and Tylen Wallace. Okay, so five, yeah. Um, and Tez Walker's been out. And, and again, like Tez Walk. I mean, excuse me, Tylen Wallace, he don't really get, in the game too much here and there but not too much but as far as passes going his way yeah every now and then um and Deontay Hardy he don't get in the game at all on offense he just special teams but I don't I don't think there will be a role right now for um for Tez Walker deep shots what's up Aang? next question came from my guy Kenny all right he said hope all is well with you and the family couple things I like to address you've been saying it all year Bateman needs targets he is a true route runner feature him more but i definitely like how we've been using zay flowers let's keep it up yeah spot on i ain't even got to add anything to it he said in these past few games with lamar running to the sidelines players are hitting lamar as he tiptoes to the sideline giving himself up and after getting out of bounds uh, it happens often with no flag at some point it has to be addressed now the one initially when it was live the one that happened in the commanders game where isaiah, isaiah lightly came over there he said look man I might not be from Florida, but I'm rocking with Lamar, heavy. And Isaiah Lightly came over to defend him, then all the bunch, bunch of other Ravens came over there too. But that one, it was like, he, Lamar still technically in bounce. Like, that's why it wasn't no flag. Um, so, I, I, it was like a, like a half cheap shot, cut, but he was in bounce. It was no flag. Like, I, I remember live thinking like, man, where's the flag? Where's the flag? But then they showed the replay, and he was still in bounce when he got hit. Um, so, with that one, it's like, but when when he is out of bounds, like they what what game was that where they actually did call it? It was this year, and I couldn't believe it because Lamar don't be getting them calls. They do not. That is not the calls that Lamar Jackson gets. They anyway. Uh, continuing, he said, uh, "Cheap shots." Um, he said it happens often with no flag, and at some point it has to be addressed. He said also that was definitely a hip drop tackle from Fowler. I believe that was pretty wild, given the rule change on hip drop hip drop tackles. Now that part is true. That part I agree with because yeah, it was because they grabbed them. Drop the little roll, yeah. So yeah, it it, it was. Um, and he said, uh, "Super glad Lamar was okay." But one thing for certain, likely. Oh man, I should have just kept reading. He said, "Likely is gonna ride for the squad, one hundred percent." He said, "Let's keep it rolling, settle that old line a little bit more, and stay focused." Didn't see a lot of bad from this game, so great team win. Appreciate all you do, engraving you the man. And just like Devontae Walker has been all season for whatever reason, I'm out. That's crazy timing with the previous question, ain't it? 